Welcome back. I'm Ben. And I'm Carrie Nikolai. And we're agents with Codal Banker Seward here in Wisconsin Rapids. Yes, we are. So today is the 3rd of April. It is the 3rd of April. Hard to believe that we already made it all the way through March and we're just starting our April showers. Right. Um, hopefully May flowers and whatnot. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Um, what do they say? March uh, in like a lamb and out like a lion type of thing? Something like that. Yeah, it, it was. it's not good. So we're still running through. We're still working. Um, we've gotten a lot of opportunity of people listing their houses and a lot of buyers wanting to buy. Right, we're still doing showings, which is, which is great. We mm-hmm. like to see that. And um, we ran across today on one of our showings that we're there was a house that a family did want to go see, but the homeowners, just with everything that's going on, um, preferred not to do a in-person and they're working on trying to do a video so that way families can still see that home they're just requesting that everyone does not come in, in the house right and i think that's one of the big pivot trends that's going on we're, we're changing the way that um, we're approaching the houses a uh, lot more is being focused on narrowing down your list mm-hmm. with the online with the pictures and videos and we've done videos before with mm-hmm. families. We've had families who are just getting out of the military and they're moving back home. So they needed to have something already purchased by the time that they get done and they move up. So doing videos in person has, is, is not new to us. Nope. <clears throat> but it's new, it's new to a lot of other people. And it's cool that we're able to flex more of our technological skills. You know, it's things that we've had put in place and now we're just doing more of. More, more in a dedicated fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're still doing some in-person showings. The trick is that we're narrowing down the list beforehand. And so it's the, you're serious about this house now. We understand you need to feel it. So we're going to go to the one house and then, you know, uh, anticipating you're going to write the offer on that house. Yeah. And, or, and like today, like we discovered with our showings today, we had three homes that we toured and... Uh, They looked good on paper, but Mm -hmm. once we got there, they just weren't, they were not, they was not what the family was expecting from the pictures. So again, it kind of helps reinforce that, be in the home to take, to have that feeling. You want to make sure that the the house hugs you, that you're not trying to fight something with the house. Right. And one of them was new construction. Yes. So, which is also good that houses are still being built. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're still issuing permits for building houses and it's, it's still moving forward. Um, and we know with the amount of inventory that's that's out there, that's been a challenge. Um, getting new inventory by building is um, is quite a trick. But we do have vacant land available. Yes, so. we've got lots of vacant land. We're getting better at uh, finding vacant land. Right. And there's lots of options. Um, even in, in the city, there are plenty of options that are lots, you know, quarter of an acre, less, 0.16. Mm-hmm. So your your smaller inner city houses can yeah. can still be built, right? There's still opportunities there. So, so now we we've got our house. We, we we've got a little bit of land, maybe. And yes. We're looking for maybe a garden. Ooh, gardening. So I know springtime. You know, we're getting the April showers and May flowers might be spring gardens. Well, and the nice thing is, at one point we did have a garden at our house. Mm-hmm. So we did have a garden. And in the garden, we had some nice rhubarb. And so we kind of moved our rhubarb yeah, we can't around the it. yard. We, we just can't kill it. No, we, we can't. So when people ask for rhubarb from us, we just give them the plant because we have so much to give. Yeah, you're not going to get a couple stalks from us. It, it's going to be an entire plant. But we're just kind of walking around the yard. We noticed that we're starting to get the rhubarb. I think mm-hmm. we've got up, you know, two inches. We've got a little two-inch oh, yeah. stock going. I mean, it's almost ready to be picked. Yeah, and then we've got the apple tree in the back, and it's showing buds. But the one thing that we did a couple years ago is we took our big garden that we had, and we grassed over it because the kids were, were leaving. They were heading out to college, and it was just going to be the two of us. Right. And we felt that the garden was going to be too much for us to take on. And I was working... 30 minutes away, so mm-hmm. it was commuting back and forth. And the last thing I wanted to do was come back to Rapids just to weed the garden or do that on the weekend. Mm-hmm. And I've also got other jobs on the weekend. Right. And you were doing uh, 
a different employment as well before real estate. Right. So we, we really didn't have the time. But this year, we're going to try something. We're going to be doing raised, fl- raised gardening. Yeah. So we went and we got some raised flower gardens. I keep calling them flower gardens, but they're gardens. Raised, raised, beds. raised beds. So we're going to be looking at doing those this year as far as starting some sort of crop back because we enjoyed the gardening. We enjoyed having the fresh produce yeah. throughout the summer and really throughout the year. I mean, the kids always enjoyed having homemade spaghetti sauce. They said it always tasted better than what was in the store. Well, so, and, and I remember with the, well, I wasn't there during the World Wars, but, you know, history class and such like that. Um, with what's going on right now with the pandemic, who knows what's going to go on. And we think a lot of you guys will also maybe inherit that sense of security by having your own garden. Mm-hmm. I know that, that was back with the World Wars, the Victory Garden. Yep. You know, they encourage everyone to raise some of their own produce. That way you felt a little bit more secure. And it actually, well, back then, I mean, there wasn't the technology, so people were outside doing stuff. I, I guess it produced about 40% of the nation's um, roughage. Now, we're not going to go back to the large garden that, that we have. We're probably only going to be doing a quarter mm-hmm. of the garden just by the amount of beds that we, we got. So we're only going to be doing a quarter of the gardening. But... We're strategically planting stuff. So we're, you have a lot of books on how to maximize the little spaces for, for gardening. Right. So that way we can kind of take our space that we have and still maximize everything out of, you know, this is what we normally plant. And we can still do it in these smaller spaces. Well, it, it's great. So if you take a, a raised bed that's maybe four foot wide and eight foot long, and you put something that needs to be trellised, down the center, mm-hmm. that's going to grow up tall, and you still have areas on both sides to work that are about two feet deep, which is very manageable. Right. I think that was one of the more daunting things with having the large garden was you look at it, and it's just this huge expanse of garden. I mean, we, we had almost a 1,000 square feet of garden. Yeah. And you just look at it, and it's like, i got to weed all of this, and i got to take care of all this and water it. And um, I think with the, the smaller beds... It's going to be, um, you can take a bed a day, perhaps, or, or two beds, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and just maintain that little bit at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to kind of see. So we're going to do a few before, during, and after of this garden project. So come and grow with us. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <just laughs> That's a good one. Well, we had done that promotion the past couple of years. Yes, we did. Uh, last year we did sunflower seeds. And mm-hmm. so uh, the year before that, we did uh, tomato plants. I think it was tomatoes. Yeah. Sure. So this is going to be a th- year three. So we got to come up with something. So if you have any suggestions of what you would like to grow, let us know. Even if it's just flowers. Um, yeah. I, I think kind of a, a beautification project in your own yard w- would be kind of cool. Yeah. So you don't have to eat them, but, you know, as long as they look pretty. Mm-hmm. So what have we done so far? We've done planning. And we've figured out where we want to plant stuff, but then you started some seeds already. I did. So I started some seeds. Um, I'm not a person to sit and do nothing. Sure. So I'm always constantly, I need something constantly to do. So, uh, you know, I went ahead and found all of our our seeds, our little, the little jiffy pots. And so I got those pellets going one night. And so I did uh, tomato plants. And so we had... uh, I want to say there's 14 tomato plants. Or there's 14 little pods. Mm -hmm. And I put like three or four seeds in them. So it was a whole entire packet that got divided up amongst all of these these seeds or these pods. And we finally have them growing. Which is pretty cool. Right. And that only took us, or they they started growing in, what, five days? Like a week ago. Yeah. I want to say a week ago. So it's kind of nice. They're they're up about, about an inch already. So it's almost like overnight, things kind of like rapidly change. So now, now these little Jiffy Tab, what you call them Jiffy Pots? Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. They come in a small little flat, disc. flat disc, right? And you add water and they puff up. And they're actually made of a material that's going to hold water, uh, hold that moisture. And the seed, it's kind of like a little blanket bubble for the seed. Right. Of, of like uh, dirt with, you know, the, the water and the moisture around it. Mm-hmm. So then the next day I went and I did a whole bunch more and I did pepper plants. Mm-hmm. And those have yet to start to grow. So, are, are they spicy peppers? Um, no, 
I do not do spicy because you're not a spicy pepper fan. Yeah, not really. No. No. So, no, they're just regular bell peppers. Cool. And then we're going to experiment again with uh, strawberries. So we're going to do that in a, a separate location. And then some uh, bulb and root-bearing mm-hmm. plants like onions. Yeah, we got some onions and some garlic yet too and just kind of kind of plant them throughout the house. So in our flower gardens that we have already in the house, last winter was pretty rough on our flower gardens. Mm-hmm. So it killed, I want to say maybe maybe an eighth or a quarter of our flowers. And so we kind of had to dig some of some of we had to dig them all up and kind of rearrange and replant them. So that way it's a better spacing and it looks a little bit more filled out. But it's now going to provide us this year with an opportunity to put some plants, some vegetables in the flower gardens. Right. And then we've got the hostas and the daylilies and you got a bleeding heart that we can't get rid of. Or do we want the bleeding heart? We're trying to keep the bleeding heart. That one's just going to grow by by root. It just gets bigger and bigger every single year. Cool. The only way to kill that off is to dig it up. So if you are thinking about doing flowers, um, be aware that some are slightly invasive and they'll spread maybe to areas that you don't want to spread, like the lawn. Right. So I always kind of... I always kind of joke around that I like bachelor plants. And what I consider a bachelor plant is like the hostas. You plant it, and it comes back year after year, but it stays in one one spot. It doesn't travel at all. Right. So we, I have. that's why I like my, my hostas and the daylilies and stuff like that. They're going to grow and they're going to spread, but it's going to take time and years, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. So, And then we have the other ones that you plant them and – the next year or two months later, it's everywhere and doesn't stay in a place. What, what Don't was, like those. What was the worst one, the bamboo? The yeah. bamboo stayed in place, I want to say, for the first three years. Then after that, it took off, and we're still digging bamboo out of the yard. Yeah. This is going on, this would be year four of trying to dig it out of the yard. Yeah, the bam- yeah. bamboo is not, that, that did not, no. Yeah. We're not going to do that again. No. No. So, so we're we're trying to we didn't do too bad of digging it up, but it's one of those things where it grows by the root. So if you miss part of the root, it will just keep spreading. It'll just keep growing. So you got to dig up the root. So where we're at now is there's seeds that are out in the store. So if you're doing your essential gathering, go ahead and gather some seeds. Mm-hmm. Um look for those in uh moisture containing jiffy pot do, do they have a name? Jiffy pots. Get some of those um, and start growing with us. It's actually pretty easy. And you can buy it as a kit. So, you know, you can buy the kit where it's got all the the pods that are ready at the desk and everything in there. And they'll walk you through how to add the water. And you can can literally sit there and watch these suckers grow up and and become little fat little balls of dirt. Um, So it does kind of come like in a greenhouse format. Um, But I'm always a little bit on the more creative side. So kind of created my own little greenhouse. Maybe next week we'll just uh, grab one of them and bring them down and kind of talk about it a little bit more. But so, yeah, I just kind of came up with my own little greenhouse theory. And and they're now in in that stage. And It's a little plastic container, but there's a couple different ways you can do that. If you're eating a lot of Mm to-go's, save some of those to-go containers. Right. The biggest thing is to make sure there's there's light that gets to the thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but even if you take that go container, cut it in half so that you've got the two trays and put some cling wrap over the top. Yeah. I mean, there, there are options out there as far as, you know, what you want to do because the, the refills, you're probably only looking at maybe, I think it was like four bucks where the kit itself is between that 15 and 25. So depending upon how big you want to go. So again, a little bit more cost effective if you can be a little bit more on the creative side. But our challenge to everyone is start something and start growing with us. Yeah be pretty cool Mm -hmm. so again we don't have any um events for the weekend yeah there's no events there is a lot of bird watching going on and squirrel watching squirrels yeah yes we watched a couple squirrels um kind of fight over something in the yard we're not sure what they were doing but it looked like a a pretty good fight but follow us on the facebook pages um i know heart of wisconsin chamber chamber of commerce is doing an activity of of virtual community activity next week. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm kind of excited about that. Take part, 
you know, take part in the community. You know, and keep in mind, too, we are still here for you guys. We are not just kind of sitting around the, the house just waiting for the phones to ring. We are still out there doing things. We're still going on listing appointments. We're still going on buyer appointments. We are still there for you. We want to make sure that we are guiding you home through this whole entire time. So you have a question, go ahead and give us a call. Yeah. We will take the phone calls. We'll we'll walk you through whatever you, you have. And if you're really realizing that your house is too small and you want to sell, give us a call. And we can do virtual meetings. You can still see us face-to-face. Mm-hmm. It's actually a little bit easier that way sometimes because we can share our screen um, and give you the information right there and we can go through and you can enjoy the pictures along with us and we can get your reaction right away. Yeah. Yeah. So we're here for you. We're here. Check we're out, doing things. Check out the social medias and uh, that's about it for this week. Yeah, pretty much. So next week we'll we'll show you what our plants look like and uh, we'll be in touch. You guys have a great Central Wisconsin day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.